Hey there, friends. So in all of the craziness of the year-end wrap-up for 2023, there was a thing that happened that uh, I didn't really talk about at the time because I was so busy doing other things, but I now kind of recognize was a little bit more important than I realized. And that is that at the age of 43, I, for the first time, was diagnosed with ADHD uh, with autism traits, which came as zero surprise to many of the people around me. Um, but it also kind of came with some answers to some long-standing questions for me personally. And I kind of want to talk a little bit about both why it took so long for me to get a diagnosis, as well as how that impacts my work with flow arts and poise spinning, and how I think it impacts how other people interact with the flow arts and poise spinning as well. Drex here from Drex Factor Poise, sharing with you the love of poise spinning and flow arts to benefit your body and brain. And today, oh, we're going to do a deep dive into brains. But before we dive in, let me just give a quick shout out to the friends of the channel. Big thanks to Dark Monk, Fire Mecca, Flow Fests, Flow Toys, Juggling Calling, Pyroterra Light Toys, Spinballs, and Ultra Poi for helping to make the videos on this channel possible. You can learn more about all these awesome companies and the work that they're doing to support flow artists like yourself by checking out the links down in the description of this video. And special thanks to the non-business friend of the channel, Becca Bekkonen. Thank you so very much for supporting my channel, my work, and my mission. All right, so first and foremost, let's talk about ADHD and more broadly about neurodivergence. Um, ADHD is a disorder that is recognized both in children as well as adults that basically uh, brings together a bunch of individual symptoms. Everything from uh, risk seeking to an inability to focus uh, to sensory seeking and a variety of other different symptoms and characteristics. Uh, it is kind of lumped together with uh, autism and dyslexia and dyscalculia and a bunch of other different conditions into a broad umbrella that is uh, known as neurodivergence. We're doing a terrible job of describing this thus far, and I will leave a link to uh, some resources that better describe both the condition as well as uh, this overall umbrella under which all of these conditions are placed. Um, the long and short of it is, is that, you know, there's a bunch of different ways that human brains can, uh, can, can sometimes function a little bit differently than, than might be, uh, might be ideal in a variety of different circumstances. And depending upon which of those particular characteristics a brain is exhibiting, you might get stuck in one of several different kind of buckets within within that umbrella. And the funny thing is for me is that looking back on it growing up, it was like painfully obvious that I had ADHD, but uh, nobody really caught it for a couple of reasons. The first of which was that um, Basically, one of the theories as to how ADHD works is that there's a deficit of dopamine, which means that when somebody is seeking something to hold on to their interest, it is more difficult for them than it is for other people. And so when indeed the dopamine does hit, uh, all of a sudden they go into hyper-focus mode. And um, I hope I hyper-focused a lot when I was a little kid, a lot, a lot, like um, such to the point where where um, my teachers and the librarian were really curious what was going on there. And at the same time, um, I got to be pretty good at an early age at something called masking that is presenting as not being neurodivergent, uh, presenting as being neurotypical, um, such that I think a lot of people around me just assumed that I was kind of a quirky kid but didn't think much else. In the meantime, somehow I would have this ability to sit down and read through a Michael Crichton novel in a single sitting, but I could not do homework for the life of me. Um, again, looking back on it, really painfully obvious, but at the time, people were baffled by this. There were like multiple interventions between my parents and my teachers trying to figure out what was going on, but again, Nobody fielded ADHD as a possibility. And you know, it's also got to be said that uh, the whole risk-taking thing is something that also fits me like a glove. After all, who was it who jumped in a, with a car full of belongings to move to the East Coast on a whim to find work in the anti-genocide movement with $300 in his bank account? 
who quit a uh, regular job in order to pursue a career spinning balls on strings and internet videos back before posting internet videos was a career for anybody. Um, the risk-taking thing has definitely been alive and well with me, as well as like seeking novelty, you know? I've changed up the format of my channel and my videos several times over the years. I'm always looking for ways to improve. I don't think that'll ever end for me, and now at least partially I have an explanation as to why. And of course, as I'm discussing this, I would be remiss if I didn't point out that what I do for a living, flow arts and poi spinning, I think it probably has an enormous amount of appeal, not just to me, but also to other neurodivergent people. You know, when it comes to learning poi and other flow arts, there's an enormous amount of physical activity that's involved with that. It falls very, very easily into the world of stimming. Um, and also too, like there's a constant novelty associated with that. I built my channel on the idea of posting a new trick every single week. And I think a big part of why it took off is that there was a big audience for that weekly new novelty. You know, I, I did a little bit of research before putting together this video, and it's kind of funny because I was looking for like nearest neighbors in terms of uh, industries in which there was a high prevalence of neurodivergence, and the two that I looked up were, uh, turns out that surveys have revealed that the prevalence of neurodivergence in the music industry is uh, anywhere between 30% in the more general industry and up to 58% just in the electronic music industry alone, which given that the prevalence of neurodivergency in the general population is thought to be anywhere between 15 to 20% of people, my goodness, like that is anywhere from close to double to maybe four times the background rate of neurodivergence. That's impressive. More specifically in the world of uh, ADHD, uh, there was a study by a organization, um, Children and Adults with uh, ADHD, it's called CHAD for short, and uh, they were doing a study of college athletes and just the acronym is so obnoxiously appropriately named in this case, but they found that amongst college athletes, 7% of them were being medicated for ADHD. And, uh, you know, given that the background rate of that in the general population is something like three to 4%, you know, between uh, between the music industry and sports, and I genuinely think that poi and flow arts are kind of like sitting in an intersection between these two things. It absolutely makes sense that poi and flow arts would be hugely appealing to people with ADHD and who fit into other categories of neurodivergency as well. Uh, my girlfriend, who is autistic, actually pointed out to me that she spots me masking in a lot of my videos. And so one of the reasons that I decided to do this off the cuff like this is because I wanted to experiment with being on camera and not masking and just seeing what happened. So if you're watching out there, hon, let me know how this went. So granted, there has never been a study to my knowledge looking for the prevalence of different neurodivergent. God damn it, there's a train coming. Okay, the train is still passing, but I think that the engine at least is far away now that uh, it's not going to kill the audio. Uh, one of the more amusing things that I came across as I was doing a little bit of research for this video is, uh, I didn't actually know this, that uh, one of the things they recommend for people with ADHD if they're having problems focusing is to go out and do a physical activity for like an hour and it'll improve their focus. And I've, I've been doing that <laughs> maybe my entire adult life. It's one of the reasons I really love poi spinning is like, if I'm having a tough time focusing on a particular day, it's like, okay, go outside and spin for 30, 40, 60 minutes and uh, it'll help me be able to focus when I come back. Like, uh, yeah, there were, there, there were the, the, the answer was right in my face the whole time. So I don't know if anybody has thought to go around and do a study searching for the prevalence of neurodivergence amongst poi spinners, flow artists, and those adjacent to us. Uh, I kind of suspect the numbers are going to be real high. Again, um, I have ADHD. A lot of the friends that I hang out with have ADHD, such to the point that like, I remember years ago uh, having a conversation with a couple, with two of my closest friends and kind of jokingly saying to them that somebody had suggested to me that I had the condition. And rather than them laughing at it as I was expecting, they both just kind of stared at me and they're just like, wait, 
That's a thing you didn't already know about yourself. But assuming that I am correct, and the flow arts are a thing that is very attractive to neurodivergent people of all kinds of stripes, I think that's kind of cool, not just because it creates some opportunities, like say, if you are a teacher out there and you happen to have a kid who's uh, struggling to focus in class, hey, maybe giving them a set of poi to go spin for a few minutes before they've got to sit down and do their lesson. What a concept. Also, too, I think that it's kind of cool that, you know, our culture is really, really not built to, uh, to be a good container for neurodivergent people. Um, and I think there's a lot of reasons for that. But, you know, having this kind of weird little pocket that I think can be a home for us, not just in that it presents us with things that keep us physically active, as well as things that, you know, kind of satisfy that desire both for repetitive action. I know for a lot of autistic people, they're trying to work through uh, prior perception and poise a great way to do that. Um, but also to just having a place where that's kind of normal and we feel like we're around other people like us is always comforting and nice. Uh, and of course, you know, there's the novelty of, uh, you know, climbing up that trick ladder. That's something that nearly all of us get into this looking for. Plus, which in terms of novelty and risk taking, I would be remiss if I didn't point out that, yeah, fire spinning. How about that? So for me, it's good to have an answer on this score. Uh, it's kind of good to know this little piece of the puzzle for me and have several years worth of history explained for me. Um, you know, I think that I'm still in the process of figuring out the specifics of what all that means to me um, and how it impacts my life even to this day. But I'm hoping too that kind of by talking about it, it also creates an opportunity for other people to explore and talk about their own version of this in their lives. Which speaking of, if you are also a flow artist who fits underneath the neurodivergent umbrella, drop me a comment and uh, let me know uh, what it is that, uh, that you're working with and also too how uh, flow arts fits into that scheme for you. Is it something that you feel helps ground you? Is it something that gives you some novelty to play with? What's going on? Leave me a comment and let me know. And we have a helicopter today too, because of course we do. And now of course I'm remembering why I sometimes avoid going outside to film. Anywho, thanks for coming along on a walk with me and listening to me chat about all this. Uh, I will include links to resources and the sources for the stuff that I'm talking about down in the description if you want to check it out for yourself. This video would not be possible without my amazing supporters on Patreon. In particular, I'd love to give a shout out to my Flow patrons who are listed on screen right now. Um, without Patreon, it would be really, really difficult for me to produce videos regularly. Uh, Patreon kind of saved my bacon in that regard. So, if you'd like to see more videos, and more high quality videos and perhaps stuff that's more scripted than this just off the cuff stuff that I was doing today. Um, I'd highly recommend signing up to support me over on Patreon. You can do that at uh, patreon.com slash directsfactorpoi. Um, every little bit helps. Uh, this is my full-time gig and I really appreciate getting to do that. And uh, the support on Patreon means I get to focus more on making videos than on doing thing other things that bring money in the front door. So help me out there and I'll help you out. It's, great. it's a great deal. And if you dug this video on ADHD and uh, neurodivergence in the flow arts, uh, I, you might also like some of the other videos that I have done on various aspects of mental health in the flow arts, including my own struggles with depression. I will go ahead and uh, link to a playlist of videos I've done on those topics down in the description as well as up on screen. Um, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to get out and flow today yourselves, and I will see you with a new video real soon. Take care now. Peace.